good afternoon and ayubowan ayubowan in singhala means uh, long life so that's a greeting that uh, traditionally sri lanka is extending to everyone i have uh, very little to do after all these speeches by dr harsha high commissioner manisha lord ahmed and all the others because i don't need to introduce you to sri lanka because you all know sri lanka we have a long history more than 2500 years if you start from the bottom left britain is a known country in sri lanka with these fabulous railways still running that is a famous nine arch bridge which is very close to my hometown still trains run on this bridge so that shows the engineering acumen and the and the and the uh, good things that has been done it's a higher end tourism destination where many people have a wonderful time it's a great city that connects the entire world with ports and it's a emerging livable city in south asia and that's why i invite you to invest in sri lanka let me give you few numbers to believe it's 21 million people it's 65000 square kilometers it has a coastal belt over 1.1300 kilometers a sea area of almost seven times 437000 square kilometers that's where economy can thrive it has a literacy rate around 92% which is highest in south asia which is in par with most of the developed countries in other parts of the world as my colleague nandalal said we have averaged 3.2% gdp growth rate in 2018 it has a per capita gdp of gdp of 4102 dollars so it's a middle income country upper middle income country it's a biodiversity hotspot has per unit density in asia no drastic seasonal variation like in london so you can enjoy the warmth of the people and the climate right throughout the year eight unesco world heritage sites aspire to be the most livable city in south asia regional integration wise we have many many achievements the sark apta bimstek ayora indo sri lanka free trade agreement the proposed uh, economic uh, comprehensive uh, technological agreement uh, sri lanka uh, singapore free trade agreement pakistan singapore uh, free trade agreement china sri lanka free trade agreement that is been already deliberated and the thailand sri lanka free trade agreement and the bangladesh free trade agreement that is to come i will speak bit more on this later now a little bit on the boi boi is the apex body that coordinates investors and investments in sri lanka it has 1700 companies some of which are going to join me in the panel discussion later and explain their story in sri lanka so any new investor coming into sri lanka we will be the focal point for you to deal with and i'll be more than happy to welcome you and to take you through whatever that you have to do in sri lanka so far we have attracted 17 billion us dollars worth of investment foreign direct investment into sri lanka and last three years has been extremely good showing a 30% annual average growth compared to the three previous years that shows irrespective of all the media and other problems sri lanka is taking off there is huge technology transfer and spill over effect that you will hear in the panel discussion there are 14 epezs export processing zones which are have liberalized very simplified uh, administrative procedures and three more are in working in progress so you will have double the landscape that is available for any new investment to come there are more than 500000 direct employees working in these zones 65% of sri lanka's national exports are through the boi companies and if it comes to industrial exports it is about 85% so the boi plays a vital role 
in Sri Lanka's economic growth. Now, what I would like to highlight, based on what Dr. Harsha said and Dr. Nandalal said, is the opportunity you have in Sri Lanka with this, what we call focusing on NEW market orientation. N stands for North. We have Pakistan. We have India. We have Bangladesh, which is giving you massive economic space. Already the Indian Free Trade Agreement allows us 4,228 HS code items at four-digit level absolutely duty-free. So whoever who sets up in Sri Lanka has ready-made access to the Indian market, equally to Pakistan with 4,684 4, HS code items duty-free. Needless to say, Singapore, 100% duty-free, including the services sector. We have European Union JSP Plus, as Dr. Harsha said, we are now working on arrangements post-Brexit, how we will work with UK. And with these trade agreements, perhaps Sri Lanka has access to more than 4 billion, fastest growing region in the world. India, European Union, China, and all the other countries around that. I just read from Colombo what covers is 71 million square kilometers of trading area. That's a huge landscape. That's a huge population. It is the world's fastest growing region. What is the business environment? 100% foreign ownership is permitted, and there are no restrictions on repatriation of earnings. As it was said, safety of foreign in investments are guaranteed by the Constitution, and we are a signatory to the MIGA of the World Bank. Investment protection agreement with 28 countries, and it is growing. Double taxation avoidance agreement with 44 countries, and it is growing. Very strong intellectual property laws in line with WIPO regulation. And probably in the panel discussion, some of the members who represent the private sector who are from UK, who have invested in Sri Lanka, will speak about these things. Very consistent focus on liberalization and improving the business environment, what we call ease of doing business. It is not only to go up on the World Bank ranking, but to make sure that business in Sri Lanka is simplified. The National Trade Policy, Trade Facilitation Committee, National Productivity Commission, the single window mechanisms that has been uh, established makes business so simple and easier in Sri Lanka. Do we give any incentives? Certainly we do, but not necessarily tax holidays as many of our neighboring countries. But I just wanted to give this comparison. If you look at the corporate income tax, Sri Lanka is at 28%, which is slightly higher to the Asian average and the global average. Yes, we have certain macroeconomic problems. Until we overcome that, we will maintain this level. But going forward, when things are better, certainly what we try to do is bring this down. When it comes to individual income tax, we are better than Asian average and global average. But for exports, it is 50%, 14%. But that also, once you recover your enhanced capital allowance, what we offer instead of tax holidays is enhanced capital allowance, which gives you, if you invest up to 100 million US dollars, 100% enhanced capital allowance on depreciable assets. If you invest above 100 billion US dollars, it will be 150%. If you invest in the northern province, which we want to bring closer to uh, the other regions, 200% enhanced capital allowance is offered at any level of investment. That means zero to above. There are special schemes available for SMEs. What I want to also highlight is for the ICT and the knowledge services sector, there is 135% uh, write-off on the uh, expenses in incurred on payments for employees can be deducted from accessible income for tax purposes for five years as it now. We are now negotiating with the Ministry of Finance to extend it little further. So the companies that will come will definitely benefit 
from this thing, and the tax is certainly incentivizing the investment climate. Last slide. What are the focus sectors? Export manufacturing. Now you have opportunity to take the products with the logistics advantage that Dr. Harsha and others spoke about to the rest of the region and the world. There is a skilled workforce. There is global value chain access. There is preferential market access. There is location and logistics advantage. What is necessary is capital, know-how, market network, which I think you ladies and gentlemen can provide. ICT and knowledge services. Very aggressive growth. Last four years, we have seen almost 300% growth. And our target is by 2025 to reach $5 billion US dollars FD, uh, uh, exports in the ICT uh, sector. Ex former chairman of SLASCOMI is here. He will express this in his panel discussion. Ambitious targets, fast adoption of technology, quality talent pool. I'm happy to announce Hindustan Computers Limited We've been negotiating for the last few months. We've almost reached the final level of consensus. And hopefully, by November, we will be executing a deal with Hindustan Computers Limited, which has a 100,000 head facility in three places in India. Their next destination is Sri Lanka. Logistics, need not, there's no necessity for me to elaborate on that. There was a lot of being said. All three ports are deep sea harbors. There's huge industrial growth. The Hub Act enables a lot of activity in that area. Tourism, again, is a splendid op opportunity with tropical weather, natural beauty, history and culture, beaches and marine life, all put together. Sri Lanka is a wonderful place. So thank you very much for all the help, particularly High Commissioner Manisha, Minister Councillor Lakmini, and the London uh, Stock Exchange uh, with Dr. Robert Barnes, and all those panelists who came, and least, last but not least, Dr. Harsha, with my convincing at the last moment, two days back, agreed to uh, join the team. Thank you very much. It was a lot of hard work. It was a team effort. I think we are on the right track. Train is ready to leave. Sri Lanka is taking off. Perhaps it is. At the nine, nine, uh, uh, nine Arches Bridge at the moment, a few hundred, uh, maybe almost 100 years ago. This is the old picture. That is what, what Sri Lanka used to be. Sri Lanka is going to be different, and I welcome you to come on board now. Thank you very much.